Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Inhale Scream. I'm Adam, this is Gabby. Hey guys. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, and we have a really great show planned for you today. Yep, in today's episode we're going to cover the headlines coming out of the Yucatan, and then we're going to get onto a call with our friend Collins, who lives just outside of Seattle. And then finally, we're going to have Where in the World Wednesday, where we show you a clip of somewhere in the world, and you have to guess where it is. Perfect. You ready to get into yeah, let's it? Let's take a deep breath. Okay. Today in the news, Mexico has a total of 8,261 confirmed cases and 686 deaths. Here in Yucatan, we have a total of 176 confirmed cases. Quintana Roo has 322, and Campeche has 57. On Sunday, it was reported that people were protesting outside of the government palace here in Merida. People were shouting, we are hungry, they were starting small fires, and people were throwing themselves into the street. However, on Tuesday, the government started passing out their unemployment benefits and going house to house, delivering them by hand. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool to see the pictures of the people going out and handing cash to families. I, we would never see that in the United States, people just going door right. to door, handing out cash <laughs> for government assistance, but that's how they do it here. I think it's pretty interesting to see. Yeah. And we're, it's good to see people are getting some help from the government at this time. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very on the ground, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, exactly. We reported a story on Monday about cartels distributing food packages around the country. And just a quick update on that, the president has actually asked the cartels to stop doing that. Mm. Um, we said, we thought it was a good thing, no matter, no matter who's doing it, if you're spreading food around at this time, I think that's a good thing. But what the president had to say was that he thinks that if the cartels want to do something for the people, that they should stop doing all the murders and stop, uh, you know, all the extortion in their communities and all the drug trafficking, and that if they want to help, that they should do that, that Mexico has this under control and that they don't need the help from the cartels to distribute food. So that's what the president has to say. What do you think about it? I, I'm, we're not from here, so it's very difficult for us to have uh, an educated opinion on this kind of a topic. But if you've lived here for longer than us, or maybe if you're from here, you could leave us a comment and let us know what you think about this whole situation. Do you think it's good for the cartels to be distributing foods in their communities, or do you think it's bad? Do you think that they should stop that? Let us know. Let us know. Okay, the last story is that the coronavirus has reached phase three here in Mexico. Phase three. Yeah, welcome. Phase three is apparently characterized by a sharp, rapid increase in infections. So we have that to look forward to over the next few weeks. They're saying that the next two to three weeks should be the worst part. So okay. buckle up. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got this, guys. We're all in we this together. We got this. We got this. this. So if you if you want to talk. If you want to talk to us, send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. We're here. Reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, if you need somebody to just rant to, send us your rants. Yeah. Up next, we had a chance to talk to our friend Collins the other night. Collins is a good friend of mine. I've known her for almost 10 years, and uh, we go way back all the way to college. And she's a very interesting person, so it's very exciting to catch up with her. Collins lives outside of Seattle, and she's involved in her local wrestling community there. So it was very interesting to hear how things have changed for her, from social distancing with her boyfriend to you know the world of wrestling being completely shut down, just like the rest of the world. You know? Right. Yeah. But yeah. With cool costumes and theatrics. Yeah. <laughs> and also insights about how her dog might be handling quarantine with her in a small studio. And how she's handling being with her dog. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, here's Collins. Hi. That's great. Hello. Sure Hi. Great. <laughs> I mean, like um, I've been all right. I mean, you can see the sun is out and in Seattle, so it's kind of like I spent most of the day outside gardening. So tell us about what it looks like there in Seattle as far as like virus shutdown. In Seattle, you know, our governor um, Inslee, he's been pretty, you know, really proactive. And, you know, he's the one that kind of started the bands all together, kind of like, you know, shutting things down one at a time. You know, currently there's a ban until 
May 4th, Inslee's officials say that it might be extended even further till June. I mean, I work a, an essential job. I work at uh, one of the utilities here. I live about 15 minutes from my job. The amount of cars on the road right now is a little bit unnerving because a lot of people are starting to come out. They're, you know, feeling invincible. Mm-hmm. I go to work with a mask. I come home with a mask. I usually use gloves when I'm out in public. I dispose of those gloves. Like, I, I feel like I'm I'm listening to the governor's orders. I'm listening to things that are going on, but I don't see the same respect for people around. I had to pick up dog food the other day and it's literally like, okay, it's in aisle eight. I just have to go down there, pick up the 20 pound bag and, you know, go through. And there's just a lady, her husband and a gaggle of children. And they're all getting very close to me. And it's just like, how can you be so callous? How can you be so evasive? I don't know. It just it just feels like, are we not listening to the same government warning? I live in uh, what's called Kenmore. So I live about 20, 20 minutes outside of downtown Seattle. I, I think that Washington State really prides itself on its outdoor activities and parks and nature and seeing those parking lots empty and those, you know, bikeways closed, uh, you know, actual state parks are all closed. And so if it's a city park or, you know, something they'll, they'll be open, but it's like restrooms are closed. It makes me nervous going to those parks because the, all the, you know, gravel parking lots are full. You know, even if you drive by, you're like, Oh, that that seems like a lot of people and it's like a lot of families are wanting to be outside. People are wanting to walk and everybody's just walking in the neighborhood to get out of the house because the schools here are all shut down. They're all doing online learning. University of Washington, they're not having people walk at their graduation. Like I would be pissed if I went through four years of college or two years of graduate to just not be able to walk at my graduation. What other ways is all this like changed your day-to-day or like and disrupted your life the biggest thing that has like kind of sucked is like my my boyfriend lives here he lives with roommates across town and i haven't seen him in almost two months and when i say see him i mean we do once a week we go on a date to taco bell where we go to the drive through and we park our cars simultaneously next to each other and we wave at each other we talk through the windows and like that that's just been like our reality and for someone like myself where I need to be animated and I need a touch and like I really love like physical like being with someone I have cried like all like six times that we've done it and it just sucks going from you know a person that you see every single weekend you know mostly every single day you know I'll drop off stuff we'll take our dogs on the walk like we're just very active with each other and going to like not seeing him. I mean, we get creative. We play Animal Crossing. So we go and visit each other on Animal Crossing. I, I equate it to like if you were on a game show and you go on this game show to an island and you have to be there with your significant other. But if you touch each other, you like lose points or you get kicked off the island. And like the prize money is like not dying, you know? (laughs) I really like that analogy. That's a really good one. Like it's starting to get to me where I'm like getting really sad that like Pride next month got canceled. They're only doing like virtual stuff. And like I mentioned, Comic Con was canceled. And, you know, working in the wrestling industry, like my gym hasn't been open since January. You know, we were supposed to have you know, our biggest show, uh, Battle Mania, which is our, our equivalent of WrestleMania, you know, hundreds of people, and it, it didn't happen. I wanted to ask you about a little bit more about the wrestling stuff. Do you wrestle as well, or do you just work there? <laughs> so um, I have done some training. I have I Glow as a reference. That's kind of the training that I'm doing now. Like, okay, Perfect. like, I'm strong. So like I can do strong things. I can do lifts like I've, you know, been helping, but then, you know, it gets to the cardio part and I'm really bad at cardio. It's something that I'd like to work on. I don't know if it's just going to be for fun or if that's something serious. I've just been doing uh, color commentary, which sounds easy, but it's me and two other guys. My job is to basically like make 
side comments or start cheers or like, you know, like heat, like get heat with, you know, the bad guys in the matches. It's so much fun. You, you have to do it a couple of times. I, I mean, I almost quit after, I mean, like the third show. I typically study, um, I look at like who's going to be on the card. I think the best part about wrestling, people like Ronda Rousey and other, other MMA fighters making like fighting more legitimized for women you know late 90s early 2000s where it was are you hot do you look good in a bikini can you just slap each other 2015 2016 it was like whoa like there's like legitimate fighters in here like there was legitimate like you know women wrestlers doing arm bars doing you know triangle chokeholds like doing you know all of these like flippy like aerobatic things as well but like doing legitimate and like powerful shit female power has really been ignited i think in the last like eight or nine years that it's just like yeah women can really do anything we can be powerful yeah wrestling like captivates like storytelling and it 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 captivates you know power and strength and you know, it's a bad wrestling match if people are chanting, this is boring. Have there been any virtual wrestling matches? Yeah. Yeah, so WrestleMania did happen, yeah. They did it to an empty arena. Uh, they have what's called the Performance Center. It's where all of their trainees perform. They did it over two nights, which it's never done. So they had a couple, ma- you know, five matches on one night, you know, seven matches on the next night. But they shot it like a cinematic production. And they filmed for like eight or nine hours and this match like ended up being you know maybe like 20 or so minutes that they that they showed the undertaker is well over 50 years old and he's beating the absolute shit out of this 30 something 40 something year old dude this would be so corny if it were in this like arena Uh so like the fact that they decided to shoot it in what was like an abandoned cemetery. And this has never happened for for WrestleMania. The fact that like a fake fighting show evoked emotion out of a 31 year old lady (laughs) in her room during quarantine while I'm sitting on the floor of my, you know, studio apartment, just like, like eyes welled up. Like this is beautiful. What did I just watch? <laughs> oh, we have a once a year promotion where it's just women on the card and just female referees. And that's where I got my debut as color commentary, you know, after working, you know, behind the scenes for so long. This is the weirdest community that I love being a part of. So my persona is my Collins on the rocks. So I am everybody's aunt. I come out and I like my theme music when I come out is Toxic by Britney Spears. And I'm usually like holding a glass of wine. Like I'm very like, hello, hello, do you need a condom? Like, yes, do you need a condom? Yeah. Okay. Do you need some tissues? Yeah, you look like you need some tissues today. You know, like that kind of like persona. Tell me about your podcast. It's the Collins on the Rocks podcast. It's basically um, where I interview. I've been interviewing a lot of wrestlers um, just in and out of kayfabe so they can tell me about their struggles they can tell me about all of their you know behind the scenes you know what we don't get to see in the ring and I call it Collins on the rocks because I mean a Collins drink is you know an alcohol beverage mm-hmm. and to me I think the most honest people can be is after a shot of tequila or a shot of something and so it's usually hey come over to my studio uh, we'll drink and then like we'll talk. Well, great talking to you. Yeah. We'll talk to you yeah. again soon. Stay safe. All right, bye. Yeah, you too. Bye. <laughs> it was really great to talk to Collins. I thought it was really interesting to hear her take on the wrestling industry right now. And also I really feel for her having to have Taco Bell dates in separate cars with her boyfriend. I'd be like that's really hard. Yeah, that was so tragic to listen to. But I imagine that there are a lot of other people who are doing similar things right now, mm-hmm. right? We're pretty lucky to be together. I mean, we live together, so we would be together wherever we are. But mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who are far away from their loved ones right now, and that sucks. Yeah, but, or like right next door and just can't even yeah. be together. True, true. It's really tragic for love right now. 
Yeah. Um, but Collins, I'm really glad that I got to talk to you for like a real conversation for the first time, and I hope it's not the last. Yeah, exactly. You didn't see the whole thing, but that whole call was actually more than an hour long. So <laughs> we had a really great catch-up session with Collins, and, mm -hmm. and so we're looking forward to talking with her again soon. Mm -hmm. Finally, we're going to end the show today with our regular Wednesday segment, Where in the World Are We on Wednesday? <laughs> In my head, apparently. Each week on Wednesday, we show you a video clip of somewhere we've traveled, and it's your job to guess where in the world are we. Yep. Nailed it. <laughs> so, here it is. We're out of here. Okay. Ah. Oh. 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 So, you tell us, where were we in this clip that we just showed you? I love this segment because it's like we get everyone involved in the comments and it's like a little game show, so yeah. don't let me down, guys. The winner gets a, a ton of... Bragging rights. Yeah. And, and, and a shout out in the show. Of course, yeah. Um, so we will reveal the location and the winner on Friday's episode, correct? That's correct. And uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys are, if you're, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, okay. if you like this episode, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell because we are going to be releasing some kinds of surprise content all over the place. So mm -hmm. you never really know when we're gonna have a new video coming out. Yes. This show, Inhale Scream, will be Monday through Friday, barring any kind of weird circumstances like yesterday. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, and keep your eye out for different content coming out. Um, we are trying to diversify and try different things. Um, and over the course of this week, we'll also be uploading some of the calls from our past episodes so that you can catch up on some of those if you missed any. Yes. Also, uh, other recurring segments, I think. We're Quarantine cooking segments, tinfoil hat Tuesdays. But we're going to stop promising you things because uh, we can't always follow through on them. Yeah, shit, man. We're doing our best. <laughs> and we know you guys understand, too. So thanks so much for being here with us. Yes. We love you. We love you, and we hope you have a great week. And we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.